Well, if you want to Nice buggies. All right, so here's kind of what I was looking for. Okay, you can kind of see that this pattern is apparent to multiple people around the room. So just have a chat with your neighbor. What's what is it about these? They all seem to kind of be saying the same thing. So when we look at this, like, what do these patterns tell us about the motion of these two objects, I guess, is what I'm asking you. Clearly the blue one is. And so that's the next question I'm asking you is, which one is faster and how can you tell by looking at this image? Okay, let's see what our friends are saying here. So the blue buggy is faster because it covers more distance than the red buggy in the same amount of time. Blue because the marks are farther apart, so it went a farther distance in the same amount of time. Tape lines are more spread out. Travels further between markings. Marks are farther apart. Okay, cool. So it looks like we're clear on that. Um, so if I back it up to this, let me grab one of these. Oops, I guess that's where that's going to go. So looking at this, we can tell that the blue one is faster. Let me grab those things. Ah. I don't want that. All right. So looking at this, we know the blue one's faster. Give it. Give it. What? Awkward thing. All right. But... Sorry, let me look at this. There we go. Looking at this, we can tell the blue one is faster. There's more distance, there's more space between dots. What do we not know looking at this right now? What is this thing um, lacking? Let me throw that on the thing for you. So I can know from this that the blue one is faster. I think I can know something else from this too. Can I know that its speed is constant from this? Okay. Um, but what do I not know by looking at this image? What's missing?
So perhaps based on that, maybe you could recommend, you can go ahead and add into what you have, like what do we need to add to this to make it more descriptive? What would be helpful here? Whoa, crow ripes. Okay, so let's take a look over here at what our friends are saying. Um, looks like we need to add in the position and the total time, um, the speed, the distance, and the direction of movement, time between each tape. We need a number line, okay? So those are simple enough things to add into this. So I can add in a number line down here. Ah, oh, come on. Back to this nonsense. Where? Boop. That's the thick black line. Come on. All right. Now here's something that always throws everybody off. So this number line is the position. And there's like grid lines. So I should be able to make these pretty evenly spaced. But I'm going to suffer or struggle with that, I should say. All right. So these are the meters. So with this type of an image, you'll usually see some kind of a number line. So you know the position, okay? So we can see the red one just barely got past three meters, but the blue one almost got to seven meters. The other thing that you'll see is some kind of a mention of dots are every, in this case, it would have been like two seconds, yeah? But a really common one would be every tenth of a second or every second. Here it's every two seconds. So that helps us with the time information. That helps us with the position information. Direction, what could we add in to help us with direction here? Because I don't know if it's going positive or negative. What are you thinking? Did you say something? Oh, positive or negative, like to the number line? Okay. But I'm thinking to the dots, because like right now, I can't tell if this is or if it's so over on the pear deck, what can we add in to help us out with direction? My friends. Easy there, Emma. You'll be okay. Yes. Come on, Emma. Come on, Emma. No. Start going to schools around here. Two weeks, probably. We're going to school for what? Three weeks. Four weeks. So, how long are time? I think a couple more weeks. I bet it will be a little bit under the time. And I'll be going to the same exact place. All right, so let's see what our friends are saying here. And arrows, starting point and ending point. Arrows, add arrows, put arrows. Okay, so it seems pretty evident that we need to add some arrows into this diagram. So I'm going to do that. Let's find the... Oh, come on. Really, the batteries are only good for one day? That's not exactly... Boop, boop, boop. So I'm going to put arrows on here. How should these arrows compare for the blue buggy? What I guess I mean to say is like they're all the same length, right? Because it's always going the same speed. And then the red buggy's going slower, so I'm going to make those arrows shorter. I'm not connecting the dots, though, for reasons that will be evident in later units. Um, but one thing I could do to help the, the viewer to let them know that these arrows are the same length is put little tick marks through them, kind of like in math class. So maybe I'll give the red arrows one tick and I'll give the blue arrows maybe two ticks. And that way somebody looking at this can say, you know, oh, Mr. Harding's really a terrible drawer, but I can tell in his heart he meant for these arrows to be the same length. Okay. Um, 
Somebody mentioned something about starting point and ending point. This doesn't always happen when I give you a printed out motion map, but typically when we draw them, we like to circle the first dot, okay? Because sometimes these get kind of complex. So circle the first dot so it's easy for people to see where it starts from. And then that means that that is time zero seconds. And then this is time one second. Oh, that's not right. Dots are not one second apart. Dots are two seconds apart, Mr. Harding. So this would be two seconds. This would be four seconds, so on and so forth. I'm not going to write that because I already set it up here. Dots are every two seconds. So if we know the circled one is time zero, you can count on from there. Two, four, six, eight. Zero, two, four, six, eight. Okay. So this is a, a new type of representational scheme here for us. This is called a motion map. And it's kind of based on the type of thinking we were using when we were doing the lab, right? We put the tape marks down and then visually we can easily tell if the speed is constant or not, okay? So same type of thing. We can go back to, um, oh man, no canvas. Canvas, BB King. We can go to images like um, Charlie running through the park or Cora on the swing and get a sense from those as to how constant the motion is. Whoa, where is stuff? Let's see. Uh, examples of where that stuff tends to show up, okay? Hurricane maps, right? This is always kind of common this time of year. So this is from last year, whatever hurricane this was. But you can look at that and, and those dots, at least initially, are spaced out every 12 hours, okay? And so you can kind of see the motion was kind of constant there initially, uh, but then they changed their spacing. Ah, poop, that's not what I want. Yeah, I don't know where I thought I stuck those things. Boo. Anyway, you can see it on the dashboard here. The image of Charlie running through the park with pretty even spacing. The image of, cheers, the image of Cora on the swing where the spacing spreads out over time. Kate, wake up. There you go. It's for you. All right. So... Where we're going to head with that then is um, not soccer stuff, but physics stuff. Let's go. Okay, so this worksheet, which is motion maps and position versus time graphs. And so on this sheet, you're going to either have a position time graph, and then you're going to have to make the written description and the motion map, or you're given the motion map, and you got to come up with the position time graph and the written description. Um, but the, the aim with this is to be able to work kind of back and forth amongst those different types of representations. So let's see if I can figure out where I put the sheet. Oh, buddy. That's not great. Oh, I thought you were looking at the hospital. I'm <laughs> 
was. I'm looking up what it is so I can read it. So here you have a position versus time graph and then a motion map. I might recommend as an intermediate step between those two things, um, whenever you're doing motion maps and position time graphs, that you maybe create a data table. Okay, so I just kind of look at, here it is at time zero, at time one second, it's at two meters. So just kind of make a data table over here. Um, time, position, so time zero, it's at zero. Time one second, it's at two meters. Time two seconds, it's at four meters. Time three seconds, it's at four meters. And then on your motion map, it says draw a motion map with one dot for each second. So at time zero, I'm gonna put it right here and I'm gonna circle that. That's at time zero. And then the next dot needs to be at the two meter mark. I think that's that. And then at two seconds, it's at four meters. But then I also need to show at three seconds that it's still at four meters. So I'm going to stack it. I'm going to put another, oh man. I'm going to put a dot above it. I'm going to show that at time two seconds, it was at four meters. And then at time three seconds, still at four meters. I still have to add in arrows here for this first bit. Okay. Showing it getting to the four meter mark. And then at four seconds, it's at three meters. Okay, so on and so forth, something along those lines. Then as far as the written description, this needs to be concise, but clear enough. that if I gave it to your friend, they could correctly draw the graph. Okay, so that's what we're working on there. So I'm going to turn the lights on here, hopefully not blind you. But um, go ahead and work on that with your group mates. You guys are in groups of two, right? Is that right? So one of you does problem one here, one of you does problem two, kind of get together in the end, see how you feel about it, and then we'll make you come up front and uh, do a real other thing. So one number one, number two. I don't understand what you're doing. Just 
This number two, drawing a graph. I thought about it, couldn't figure it out. Riley Goodfellow. Riley. Can you help me? How do you. What is this done? Can you just figure out the second graph? Like, we have to like, draw a graph. What do the arrows mean? Zero to five. Should I just do it the same as this graph? Alexis, are you going to make it the same units as the top graph? Like the zero, one, two, three, four? Okay. There's mostly just for the level, like I just need some more. Um, you know? But there's just so these are this is like literally the position meters. So I read this is time zero, and then I'm starting off the same. Oh, and then just go across. Time zero, oh, okay. so even when it's one second later. Boop. All right. So if power school picks on you, come up here with your buddy and show us what you did and why you did it. Let's see here. Oh, come on. 
on class. There we go. All right, Power School would like to hear from. Boop, Rachel and friend, come on down. And you can either complete the motion map or you can uh, do the written description. Um, I'm going to actually. So friends here with the pen, a couple of notes. Okay, looks like it's working right now. But if you do something and then you need to erase it, you can either control Z if it's immediate or there's a little rocker button right here. Rocks towards the tip or away from the tip. If you push down the end of the button towards the tip, it's an eraser. And it took me four months to figure that out. But now you know it right away. So, yeah, motion map or written description. Tay is back for you. Try to avoid swearing because it is recording the screencast. So. No, I'm just supposed to try Speak, So are you going to go for the motion map? Yeah. Okay, cool. Do you want me to just like restart it? Uh, go ahead and just add on there. That's fine. I just remembered something else that I was going to mention about the uh, writing on this thing. This is not as easy as it seems it would be. Right, right. Is that what you're recognizing up there? Like, Mr. Harding makes us look so effortless. I want to put my hand down, but I know it Oh, won't. it's the worst. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Is it the same as one? Yeah. And then, Fred, if you have questions about it, uh, that's what the Pear Deck is for. Right, the Pear Deck's still open, so let me... Rachel clearly does yeah. not think you'll have any questions about it, though. She's already headed back, so... Fair enough. Mic drops. Um, does anybody have any questions? Oh, we're just learning how to do these things. So I'm, I'm up for questions. You might not necessarily think it's uh, incorrect. You just want to know a little more about it. That's a fine question to ask right now. Anybody got anything? That's what you do for your motion map as well. Yes. Fair enough. All right. Um, so the other thing that we learned the other day is that it really it sucks bad enough to just draw on this thing, but then to like write out words is just not fun. But if you double click on it. You can just type directly on it. So, um, and then you can make the font bigger too so people can actually read it. Um, so let's power school pick on somebody new. Now, the way that the algorithm works with the random student selector, it tends to pick on the same people a lot. So don't be surprised if Taya now gets to come talk to us about the written part or maybe even Rachel again, okay? So you can watch me. Clearly, I'm clicking the button and it's going to pick... Olson, there you go. Come on up. So all that's left is the written description. I'm going to give you a bigger font size, though. Let's go with the 20. Let's go with the 20-point font. Yeah, there we go. All right, so go ahead and type in your written description. lab on the five senses last hour so I had some hot sauce, some lime, some sour patch kits, some pretzel, and a dump dump. And now I have some. Yeah, yeah. Thank 
All right, so we've got it moves in a positive direction, then stops at four meters, then starts moving in a negative direction. So what I want you to do is consider that with your neighbor. And if you got questions or concerns on that, go ahead and hit it up with the pair deck. Anything we would need to add to that if we were wanting to up the likelihood of our friend drawing the graph correctly? So far, I've got to add the speed. And I would say that really, maybe you can just add the relative speed. Are both of those sections at the same speed, or is one of them faster? Or is one of them slower? However, you'd want to add that in. Moving in a positive direction, it stops at four meters and it starts moving more slowly in a negative direction, something along those lines. Probably be good. All right. We will then finish up with this stuff tomorrow when we get off the show. Please be a hero. Pick up after yourself. If Ms. Haxton gave you some pretzels, make sure those cups go in the trash. Make sure your chair gets pushed in. What, what? No, no, no. Yeah, don't worry. If you're not done with the next one, we'll work on that tomorrow a little bit. I'm not a big believer in homework.